Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about Visual Studio 2022. No, it is not out yet, but they did just release the second preview. And given that this is a very important program in the world of game development and development in general, I figured it's a good idea to take a look at what we can expect in the upcoming 2022 release. So that is what we are doing today. You will notice this is the Visual Studio 2022 preview page. Uh, we'll get into some of the details about what is new here. Uh, one thing is we are now fully 64-bit across the board, the IDE, the tool chain, everything 64 bit. We also have .NET 6 in place. Uh, it is available uh, for download. Again, there is the community version out there, so you can check this out completely for free. And that is what we are doing today. Now, you'll notice I'll start at the very beginning, and that is the installer. Now, one of the nice things about uh, Visual Studio in general, the last couple releases, I think starting in 2019, is it's gotten better at living side by side with earlier versions. So you should be safe to check out the 2022 preview, even if you're using 2019 or 2017 in a production environment. Although I would not recommend using this in production, obviously. But we're going to see here a couple of interesting things in the installer. Uh, one, we now have Linux development with C++ as a workload. You can see here, you've got, basically you come in here and you can select uh, what you're going to be doing with it. So if you're going to be doing C++ development for games, you can pick that there and you'll see it'll give you the core that you need, the Windows 10 SDK, IntelliCode, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, in, interestingly enough, Incredibuild is uh, an, a feature in there that's a distributed build system for speeding up your builds. So if you're doing that, and then we could go here and say, okay, we want to do desktop development as well, and we're going to do some .NET development in here as well. It'll basically grab all of the things that you need. You also have the ability to come in and grab things at an individual component level. So for example, if you want to install Python support or F Sharp or various other different languages or options that are available in here, uh, you could do so. Another thing about this preview is previously in preview one, there was only English. Now you're going to see we also have uh, two options for Chinese, uh, Czech, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Polish, uh, Brazilian, Portuguese, Russian, Spanish, and Turkish language options available as well. And yeah, we'll just go ahead and do that install. Now, I'm not going to sit here and watch 7 gigabytes of stuff downloading, uh, but you will notice it's basically the same installer, basically the same setup. The only thing I think it was different there was the Linux uh, stuff, but we'll let this install, and then we'll jump in and take a look at what is new in the IDE itself. All right, so here we are in Visual Studio now installed. Now, interestingly enough, it asked for a reboot at the end of the installation process, but doesn't actually start it up. And it also took very little time. It was amazing how fast it actually was to run. Now, here you're going to see a couple of things going on. First off, they have a new font in play. Uh, I don't know if you're going to like it or not. I actually do like it. I think it's growing on me for sure. The other thing you're going to notice is there are a completely new set of icons for basically everything in the IDE. So here we are seeing them in dark mode. I think there's pretty good contrast. They stand out well and they look good enough. Uh, but you'll also notice if we go into light mode, warning uh, for the uh, people that might be about to be blinded, this is pretty bright. Oof. Uh, we also have a completely new set of icons, and they hold up pretty well, in my humble opinion. So we're going to head on back. We'll go back into dark mode, where us vampires are more comfortable. And back. Okay, so here we go. Now, there's actually uh, two little features in here that I absolutely love the idea of, but one is actually not quite working for me, so it's going to be a lousy demonstration. But the other one, the other one I like. So what I can do is go ahead and set a breakpoint right there. And this is something that uh, I've wanted for a very long time. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and run our code. Obviously, we'll hit our breakpoint right there. So we've hit our breakpoint. So now what the new functionality we've got is we can pick any line here, and we can actually go ahead and say uh, force run to cursor, and it will automatically jump to that position. So what I could do now, let's go ahead. We'll put another breakpoint in, and I'll show you where this is actually pretty nice. So we're going to restart, and now I'm going to say, all right, Force run to cursor. You also saw as I hovered over, there was a little green icon. We could do it that way as well. So I'm going to say force run to cursor. And what you're going to notice is it completely jumps over all of the breakpoints in between. This is something I have wanted for ages. I'm going to use it a ton. I'm definitely happy to see that. It's a very small thing in place. Now, another thing, and this one is quite big, but unfortunately to me, it doesn't work. So we've got this simple example going on where we're going to be, well, here, let me just get rid of the breakpoints here. And we'll go ahead and we will run it. And you see we got a simple hello world going on. Well, I could come in here and I could change my code uh, like so. And now we've got this new option here that we can do hot reloads. I can say, okay, go ahead, apply my code changes. And you shouldn't have to do breakpoints, stop or run. It should just kind of figure it out. Unfortunately, it doesn't. 
So I don't know if that's user error or not, but another major feature that they're advertising in uh, this second release is that it now has hot reload for both .NET and C++ C++ code. So that's an interesting feature that for me, for some reason, uh, doesn't actually work. So heading back over to the uh, release note details or the, the preview details here, you can see the top level things about uh, Visual Studio 2022 are 64-bit uh, across the board. So uh, you should be able to be able to use more memory, more uh, tabs open, faster builds, that kind of stuff. Uh, we have uh, .NET 6 out of the box. Uh, so develop cross-platform apps, C Sharp and .NET MAUI. Uh, build responsive web using Blazor, so on and so forth. So you've got .NET 6 out of the box. You've got C++ plus 20 support out of the box and improved IntelliCode. We'll get to IntelliCode in just a second as well. If you want to get in and go through the full release notes, they are available right here. Uh, there's quite a bit here. Uh, so I'm only kind of showcasing the very, very, very top level stuff. But if you're in specifically details about what's new in 2022 preview two, um, again, we've got the new set of icons, uh, the old versus the new. Uh, I do think the new generally look better in both white and dark modes there. As I mentioned earlier on, there are now a number of different localizations available instead of just English. Uh, it's got better C++ to build tools. Uh, we've got CMake is definitely getting a lot more um, love in here, uh, as is the Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, no longer do you have to do uh, SSH connection. You can build directly to it. So if you're doing Linux development on Windows, it should be a more pleasant uh, environment. Uh, team productivity improvements, um, so on and so forth. We got, again, hot reload. Uh, I don't know if I'm just using it wrong, but it doesn't actually work for me. But if I'm honest about something, I find hot reload almost always causes more problems than it solves. So it's something I rarely use, uh, but it does give you the ability in theory to uh, make changes to your code without having to stop and restart them. Uh, so it should be a nice one there. But again, I don't know if it's user error. It just simply doesn't work for me. So if you want to go ahead and download it, it is available as a free download. Uh, you can install them side by side safely. I have done that. My Visual Studio 2019 still continues to work, which is nice. Uh, if you want to download it, it is available here. And then, of course, uh, one last thing to talk about before moving on is the improvements to IntelliCode. Now, IntelliCode is basically IntelliSense with a bit of machine learning from all of the GitHub examples out there. And you can see it's basically just giving you more in-depth, more suggestions. And now what you've got is basically full line completion. So if you're writing a set of code uh, that is pretty common so you, if you're doing reinventing the wheel basically uh, it's trained itself on a ton of github code and it can give you full line code suggestions so you're seeing here it, it's spitting out code uh for common functionality it, it's a bit like that uh code pilot i previewed the other day but this one is literally just an improved telesense and uh the IntelliCode uh stuff is definitely improving in visual studio 2022 so that is another aspect that was a, released in preview one so uh, uh, if you look at the kind of the release notes for preview two, uh, there's a decent amount new in here. So I'm expecting each new release, uh, we're going to have more and more stuff. So if you want to get into the, the real weeds of what's available here, uh, you can find them right here. So we got a lot of improvements across the board. Uh, it's looking like Visual Studio could be a pretty interesting release. Now I do know also that more and more people are integrating into lighter weight solutions, things like Visual Studio Code. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how much of an audience Visual Studio 2022 grabs. It's still, you know, the enterprise choice of solution. And I think the game uh, that probably most AAA studios out there are still using Visual Studio Code. And it's nice that it's doing cross compiling a lot better. Uh, but yeah, that is a quick look at the preview two of Visual Studio 2022. I've uh, got new font, new set of icons, some uh, nice new love for things like hot reload, edit continue, and so on. Uh, they just don't seem to work for me. And, and there's a, obviously a ton, ton more behind the scenes and 64-bit execution. I'm curious to hear what you think of Visual Studio 2022. Uh, is it too fat for you at this point in time? Are you using something else? Or are you pretty excited by this release? Let me know. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.